All right, everybody. So I'm going to try something new today. Uh, welcome to uh, Workshop Wednesdays. So uh, kind of a new little thing here. Uh, you know, I like to game, but I'm not a super avid gamer. So I'm going to change desks a little bit from this one over here to uh, my workshop desk. So uh, this is where I do all kinds of different projects. Um, I have a 3D printer I, I use every now and then. Um, I work on um, some, some of my paintball guns here, uh, doing cleaning, maintenance. Um, also do uh, fun little projects uh, like this uh, that we'll get to here in a second. Uh, I like to do a lot of cosplay stuff as well, so you'll see some Spider-Man projects pop up. Uh, I did a Halloween costume recently, so I kind of figured this would be a cool idea to to bring some of these creative projects outside of gaming and what Twitch usually has um, to, to you guys. So um, today, uh, as you can see here, um, we're going to be working on... Um, my Mandalorian rifle project. So this one's actually really cool. Um, it's all 3D printed. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk through a couple things that I've already done up to this point, uh, show you how I did it, and um, do a little bit of work. Um, I'm going to do some surface prep on these actually today um, before uh, we, we get to painting. Um, so let me kind of walk you through uh, where this came from. Um, so this is kind of a neat uh, file I found. So um, I know season two of Mandalorian came out recently. I started working on this uh, during season one because I thought it was really cool. Um, and to, to quote the Mandalorian, uh, weapons are part of my religion. So yeah, so we had to make the uh, rifle um, he uses. And I apologize, I can't remember the actual like name of it. Um, maybe we can look that up here in a second, but I thought it'd be really cool to build one um, and get it as accurate as possible with the equipment that I have. Um, so without further ado, let me kind of show you what we're working with here. So um, as you can see, so I have a couple parts here just to start off with. Um, these have already been uh, sanded once and um, primed once. Uh, and we'll go into exactly what we use, but as you can see, so all these are just different parts um, that uh, came with the file. Um, so we threw these on the 3D printer, um, printed them out, and, and started working with them. Um, so let me show you where I, I found this. It's actually a really neat um, um, website he's got here. Um, get this going for ya. Apparently this does not like to work. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we got it up and going. So, this is the file I found on uh, MyMineryFactory.com. A gentleman named Rob Palza. don't really know much about the history of this file or how it was uh, created. Um, I think he has some notes here that you can read through if you're interested in doing this. And uh, when I upload this string to YouTube, I can uh, I'll, I'll include this link. Um, so if you wanted to go and uh, build this yourself, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, he's done a, a really good job with this. Um, I think, let me see. So he's making it free and personal use. If you're doing anything, money with it, you're violating my copyright. So luckily, I'm not being monetized by this video. So that's good. We're, we're in the clear here. But I'm not intending on selling this. I'm not intending on, on, on mass producing these. This is for me and to hang on my wall. Um, and there's other reasons why I can only hang it on my wall too. And I'll show you that in a second because this thing is going to be extremely heavy. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty neat. So he gives you all the, uh, the parts, the 3D print files, as well as uh, what else you'll need to make this complete. Um, he's included some pictures over here, um, all of your part numbers, so these will come in handy when you start to build, because a lot of these uh, little ones um, will start to look the same um, as you go through here. Um, kind of a layout of what you're going to be using. Um, some more pictures. I think he has some build pictures in here as well. Uh, and keep in mind, so all this is 3D printed, so it's not going to come out in these colors. So you can kind of have the freedom of, of doing whatever colors you'd want to do on this. And um, I, have a, I have a color scheme in mind for mine. It's going to be similar to this, but um, kind of put my own spin on it. Um, and the thing, yeah, so here are some build pictures. So this is kind of what we're going for. 
Um, so again, everything you see is 3D printed except for this barrel and I guess this lower, I guess you'd call it the gas tube. Um, so he, all of that is basically that's the only two things you need outside of 3D printing is, is this, I think he used PVC or some wooden dowel rods, which I found were extremely hard to find the size uh, that you need here in America. So I think this guy is from the UK and um, apparently they have different size stuff. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I could not find the size that he was talking about. So we'll go over that too and, and what I use for that instead. And I personally think my options way cooler, but we'll see what you guys think. Um, just a few more build pictures. Um, he did a really, really good job with the, the paint and prep on this. Um, I'm going to try to replicate that. Um, so yeah, so this is it. Again, I'll, I'll share this link with you guys. Um, I, I think it's a really, really good model, and I'm excited to uh, see how it turns out. Okay, so let me kind of show you the parts I've got so far. Um, really, really, really fun. So you've seen these, so you can kind of see like the, the weapon body here. Um, it's always fun. Um, the end piece, I think this is a, a very, very iconic piece. Um, I uh, re really enjoy this piece. Um, here. Oh, also, it looks like we got Cooper. It's called the Ambin... Fa oh, well, thanks! There we go. The Ambin Phase Pulse Blaster, also known as the Ambin Sniper Rifle. That is good news. Thank you, Cooper, for that, because, yeah, I didn't have the, the name down. So now we know, the Ambin. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so these are the parts I have prepped for now. Let me show you some other parts I think are way cooler than this. I'm really glad Cooper joined in on this one, because he is our expert in this kind of stuff. Bring my cart of goodies over here. Alrighty. So I'll show you my. Uh, oh yeah, hearts. <laughs> I'll show you my favorite piece so far. Um, this one is not done, but it is the closest to being done. And um, I don't think I have showed this to anyone yet in this stage. So I will do that now. This right here. Let me. Uh, right, let's kind of big. I can't really fit it in that camera view, but I can show you here. This right here is my favorite piece for multiple reasons. Um, one, it looks absolutely awesome right now. Um, it's already painted, as you can see. Actually, it's a wood stain. And you're probably wondering, oh, why did you use a wood stain on plastic? Because this is 3D printed. This whole part is 3D printed. You can actually see the seam just a little bit right there, and we're going to cover that up with uh, a cool technique. Uh, later on, but um, but yeah. So your why did I use a wood stain on plastic? Well, the cool thing is, is that this is a very special 3D print filament that is actually made of wood or has wood particles in it. So um, if you're curious, it's the Sunlu. Uh, I have it right here. I can't get it out. But it is the Sunlu 3D print filament, and they have a pretty decent wooden fill. Uh, how did I get this one? Here we go. Okay. Yeah, so here we go. So if you want to use this, I would say 100% go check this out. So Sunlu 3D print filament it's from China. Um, so not, not made in America, unfortunately, but they did a really, really good job with it. And I really like this filament. Um, just because it is wood fill. So this is what this looked like before I actually printed it. You can see it's like a natural wood brown there. Um, and you can kind of feel the texture is wooden too, even in the filament. So there's a whole bunch of little wooden particles in here that when you print it, it makes it feel and, and look like wood. And I think my favorite part of printing with this is that as you're printing, the heat from your nozzle will make your entire house smell like wood, which I think this is, um, yeah. I can't remember what kind of wood they used in this, but it, it smells like you, the lumber section of Home Depot. Absolutely amazing. Uh, my favorite print filament, and I'm a little worried that I've ruined it because I've just kept it in this box, but um, and not not sealed away. Um, for those of you who don't know, you should 100% seal your filament when you're not using it, or you'll end up with um, 
water uh, basically it absorbs moisture and you can't print with it anymore. And I'm running into that problem with some of my other filaments I've left laying around. Um, I'm a little upset by that. So, you know, you live and you learn. But, um, yeah, I really like that filament. Anyway, uh, back to the actual piece we're talking about here. So I printed that in that wood filament. Super, super cool. You can knock on it. Don't know if you can hear that. But it it sounds like a piece of wood. You know, it feels like a piece of wood. Smells like a piece of wood. For all intents and purposes, this is a wooden piece that I printed this stock out of. And I think that is the coolest thing. And um, something that I think not everyone building this rifle is going to do. Um, I also went ahead and printed it in a relatively high infill. So um, infill is a setting that you can do on your 3D printer, basically saying how solid this is going to be. And I made it pretty solid because I wanted this to feel like a solid piece. And I think we have a mission accomplished on this. This is by far my favorite thing I've ever 3D printed. Um, and just to kind of cover what else I've done so far, um, so added just some brass. If you look up in the, the webcam view here, you can see um, added some brass coloring on the top here. Still needs some touch up, but did some brass there and then like a brass flashing um, here. So in a perfect world, I'd probably, you know, um, be cool if I could go find a, a brass piece that would fit that. I don't really have the tools to work with metal in my tiny apartment. Um, so paint and prep and that is going to have to do for now. But again, this is the best piece so far. Really, really enjoying it. Um, so let me kind of walk through some stuff that we have to do now. Um, we have a long way to go um, to make this um, complete. And that's okay with me. I like projects. No big deal. Um, also, I'll talk about that at some point. This is a secret for later and what's making my rifle my own. So this is, this is a really cool piece, but that's for later. Anyway, so we got a lot of work to do. Um, so like I said before, so these are some of the pieces I've already started doing some prep on. Um, so if you're not familiar with 3D printing, um, nine times out of ten, you can't just take a piece off the printer and call it done and paint it and call it done. Um, let me show you the reason why. Um, so I have a couple pieces here. I have um, have some pieces from the rifle that we can look at, and also some other pieces that I think are a little bit better example. So this is um, an unsanded, unpainted, um, basically just how it came off of the printer piece. Um, and you can see, it's kind of hard to tell in this camera. Maybe I point my light away a little bit but yeah so you can see here there's all kinds of like little ridges um, the corners are pretty terrible right now just because it's it printed like this so sticking to the um, the bed um, makes these corners really terrible so there's you it's very very rare that you can just pick something off up off of the printer and, and, and call it a day unless you don't care unless it's just a something to set on your desk or something um, you should probably do some prep work um, whenever you do that. So this one's kind of hard to see. Um, this is printed in white, so it's kind of kind of hard to see. But I have some other stuff here. Um, for instance, this is a little badge that I had printed um, for again some paintball stuff. Um, started sanding on here, but you can kind of see. Maybe you can't. This thing doesn't focus too well. You can kind of see the little ridges here. Um, so this is like a it's like a dome, sl small dome shape. So as you print upwards. Um, you know, adding each layer, you're going to have these little ridges, so you can see those really, really clear on there. You really want to get those out, because um, it doesn't look good. And even when you paint it, those are going to show through. Um, just happens. Um, here is a, another piece, which actually, this one is for Cooper, who is in the chat right now. So, <laughs> uh, he gets to see some of his uh, pieces come to life uh, today. Um, and... I, I get to show him how little work I've actually done on his pieces, <laughs> and I apologize for that. So this is for Cooper. This is going out to him. He's building a Spider-Man. Uh, so we went ahead and printed this one. It's kind of a wonky-shaped piece, so we had to kind of um, build some supports and work on that. But it's a really good example of why 3D prints need prep work. Um, so you can see the front here. Uh, not terrible. You can see those little lines. You can hear it. 
I scratch it, you can hear those lines. Um, but also some things that you can see that needs work. Um, there's all these like little fuzzy strings on here. So as the nozzle moves back and forth, it leaves little plastic strings. Um, a lot of those ridges we were talking about down here, some corner issues up here. And if you go to the back side, you can see a lot, a lot more of this. The back side is never pretty of 3D prints. Um, so this here, this is some of our supports. So when we were building this, we had to raise it up off the ground. Um, or off the, the print bed because you can't print in midair. So we had to build some supports to make that work and um, the remnants are are never really good. Um, so you can see where, where it was connected here, there's this flat piece here that is not part of the print itself um, but um, is still attached so we'll have to get rid of that. But this is an example, another example of, of why we can't just take off the printer and use it there. Um, and I got plenty more stuff to show you against more of uh, Cooper's stuff that uh, will be sent to him eventually, maybe for Christmas, um, that just need to, to have some work done on them. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, basically, we've taken these parts off the printer um, and have started working with them. Um, now, a couple things. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, um, there's a couple things to, to think about when you're when you're using these parts. Is there, there's a few ways to prep these, and it, it really depends on how you want it to look. And I'm still learning as well. There's a a few different materials and things you can use. Um, so one way to do it is just sand it and sand, 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 um, and then go over with your your coat of paint. Now you can do that, but usually that only really works with like if you're printing really really fine layer heights. Um, so another setting you can do on your printer is if I'm printing up this way, um, you can tell it how thick you want each layer to print. Um, so typically I'll do relatively thick because I know I'm going to post process anyway, and also these parts are really really big, uh, so I don't want it to take 20 hours to print. Um, so, if you do a really, really fine layer, so really, really small layers, you can get away with just sanding. Um, so one example I did, this is my first print on my new printer, um, is this little doggo, really cute. Um, but he had super, super fine layer heights, like ridiculously fine. Um, so really all I had to do is just kind of go over with a coat of sand, we just did a, a quick sand on him, and uh, threw some black primer on him, he turned out really good. You can barely see the lines in there. I really, really like that. Um, but in most cases, you can't get away with that. So what we're doing is uh, we're taking our parts. So again, our, our, our white parts here, uh, going over with some sandpaper um, and then doing a couple coats of primer. And we're not just using normal old gray primer. We're actually using a... Um, a filler and sandable primer. So use that a lot in um, car automotive work um, to fill little holes, divots. Uh, I think you can use it not over rust, but where rust used to be. Um, but we're using that because it does a pretty good job of filling those lines. Um, so what we've done on these. Oh, hey, hey, I'm not that good looking, but I appreciate it. I think I'm. I think I'm incredibly average, but thank you, Sid. Uh, so, um, yeah, so what we've done on these, we've done a, pa a coat of, uh, or a pass of some sandpaper. So I have a couple different grits of sandpaper I'll go over uh, two or three times with that. And then I did one coat of our filler primer. Um, and this is where we are here. And the filler primer we're using, just so you're aware, is uh, I've got a couple here, but I started using this one. Um, it's going to be a little bit thicker. Oh, let me hold it that way. It's going to be a little bit thicker than um, uh, some of the other ones. So they have ones that's just sandable. This is a filler and a sandable. Um, <laughs> thanks, Sid. Uh, it's the No Shave November beard. That's why I'm killing it. Um, but yeah, so this is the uh, the two in one filler and sandable. So it's going to be a little bit thicker when it goes on. Um, I was kind of worried when I first started using it because um, I didn't know how thick it was going to be, um, but so far it's kept all the detail really well, and I'm I'm pretty pretty happy with it. So I'm going to keep using this unless I have an issue with it. So 
I'd say uh, give that a shot. They also come in, um, like I said, just normal. There we go. Just normal sandable. I haven't used this one yet, but I do have it just in case. Um, sweet. And then, yeah, and then you don't want it. This is just a paint and primer. Don't use that on 3D prints. Um, okay, so basically, for the next little while, I'm just going to start sanding. And I don't know, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but I'm just going to start sanding these. So I'm not going to work on these small pieces yet. I'm going to have to bust out the Dremel for that. Um, just because, not necessarily this one, but I have some really intricate pieces down here that I'm going to have to get the Dremel out and, and try to sand that. Because that's going to be a, a pain. A pain to try to do that. So, um, so yeah, so we're, we're going to work on these ones. I want to get these big pieces done. Um, first, make sure everything's working with the the, the filler primer, um, and then we're going to have to do probably a couple coats. I've heard um, to get these completely smooth finish. I've heard maybe two or three coats on this, and we're at one coat. So uh, this is this is the fun part of um, making three D printed objects is being able to sand for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And hours. Yeah, so let's go ahead and, and get going. Um, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to start sanding and um, be a good time. So we have a, a couple different grits of paper. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch so y'all can see a little bit better. I um, have a couple different grits of paper here. We have the 320. Uh, 220 and 400. This is just a pack I got from Ace Hardware. Seemed to be a uh, pretty good variety. Um, I've heard some people go all the way up to like 1,000 grit or something like that. Um, I don't know if I need that. Not going to lie. I haven't experimented that with that yet. Um, but I figured start kind of low in the grit level. So basically the numbers, if you're curious, um, grit level is just how much sand is on your sandpaper. So the lower the number, the less sand is on it, making it a much coarser finish. Um, so typically what I'll do is um, start with a really low grit to remove as much material as I can. Um, so for getting all those ridges down really nicely using that and then just kind of stepping up as you go um, to make it basically a more polished finish. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, hey, thanks, Sid. Yeah, I wanted to do something different. Um, you know, everyone does gaming, and I like gaming, but I figured this is kind of something I could bring that's a little different. I know, um, I know Twitch is kind of pushing for something other than gaming every now and then, so I thought this might be cool. Um, I don't like staring at screens all day long. Uh, that's not true, I kind of do, but um, <laughs> I did want to do something a little bit more physical and maybe bring, uh, bring some life to my channel. So yeah, tell your friends. Tell your friends! But yeah, we're going to be making all kinds of cool nerdy stuff, so hopefully it's good content. Mmm, that's a good notification. Thank you, Windows. Apparently, I don't have any viruses. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, let me see. I have some other sandpaper here I just don't typically use anymore. Um, I'm going to show you this as a counterexample just of what not to use. Um, actually, I might have lost it. Yeah, okay, so this stuff here... I got a big old pack of this. So this stuff is like for, I think this is more for wood, right? Um, it works fine, but you can, oh, you can't really see it. My bad. Um, so up here, so you have the 6100, 150. 60 is way too low. You're going to be eating up your plastic if you do that. Not even say, let's say 150 is too low. You're just going to be taking so much plastic off of your part um, and just basically just marring it up. You're going to lose detail. It's going to look terrible. Your paint's not going to work. Um, so kind of stay away from these lower grits. I'd say the lowest you'd want to go is around a 200. Um, that's just my opinion. You might find something that's is different. Um, that's just what I'm going to, what I'm going to suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Sand. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet you in, in, in maintenance and the, oh my gosh. Yeah. Theater is, I mean, you have to do all kinds of different props, I'm sure, and yeah, so sandpaper is an art, and it's something that I'm learning and I'm still not confident with. This is like, I'd say, the, the super, super basics. Um, 
I could probably do this a lot better. But yeah, you, you learning sandpaper is not a joke. Um, and yeah, I got a long way to go. Um, and I haven't even experimented with uh, wet sandpaper. Um, so you can do a wet sand as long as your, and this one says it, as long as your paper says wet dry on it, you can do a wet sanding where basically you're sanding your parts in the water. I don't know really what the purpose is of that. If someone could explain it to me, I'd love to know. Um, but for me, it's just, yeah. it's I'm going to do dry sanding for now. If I find a reason to try wet sanding, I will. But so far, I'm happy with the results. Um, oh, yeah, you're on the journey with me, man. Yeah, We'll, we'll, try, uh, we'll try a whole bunch of different sandpaper techniques. How about that? So maybe, we'll, uh, maybe one of these videos will do a... Um, I'll just print some blanks. Ooh, that'd be fun. We'll print some blanks of uh, some, some 3D printed parts, so maybe just like some squares or something, and then try different types of sandpaper prep and see um, see what we get. I think that'd be a fun idea. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you. I'm going to thank Sid for that because he gave me that idea. Hmm. I like that. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm just going to start sanding. Um, I think I've talked enough. Um, I think I want to, oh, I think I'm going to stay away from the two, now nah, I'll do a 220 today, because this is still pretty rough. So, all right, yeah. Let me know if y'all have any questions. I think I'm going to do, I don't want to mess this part up yet, because that's the iconic piece. So we're going to do, um, going to do this guy. And yes, I will 100% have to vacuum after this because this stuff gets everywhere. It gets absolutely everywhere. Um, especially when you have the primer on it, it's going to be a fun time. Um, <laughs> if you could sing that in the lyrics. <laughs> Just a small town me making some prep to sing. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So what am I using? 220. So we're using 220 on the filler. Wow. Okay. Sorry. I'm already excited because I did this and it's already super smooth. Um, that makes me excited. Um, so 220 on our filler primer. Um, oh, I'm excited for this. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so excited. Where's that my... Oh, that was my other phone. It's my work phone. I'm. If you if you didn't notice, uh, this is the middle of the day, uh, three o'clock my time. And I'm not working. And that's because it's the holiday week. I don't want to work. So instead of sitting at my desk looking at my screen, I'm gonna sit at my desk and um, sand some stuff. So this is really really cool. Oh wow, that's turning out great. Um, we'll have to be careful of some of these little rivets here. Um, and those are 3D printed as well. Um, I don't want to lose those. I don't think I will. But um, yeah, that's already way, way, way smoother. I'm not going to have to hit this with too much sandpaper, I think. I think, um, I think this will be just fine. For a little bit of passes. Primer is coming right off. Wow, that's so smooth. I might only have to do two coats on some of these parts because that's really, really nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You can tell I've never tried this method before. Um, especially not this primer. Like I said, this this filler primer is new stuff to me. And um, I really, really like it. <laughs> You're editing uh, Nico's episode of my podcast here, my distraction. <laughs> I'm glad I'm a distraction. Just chilling with... I think uh, you're my one viewer right now, so that's fine. I'm cool with that, just chilling with my bro in chat. I didn't know uh, Nico was doing a podcast. Um, 
So we have a friend, uh, Zolo Rules. Um, he does Twitch as well. Apparently, he's doing a podcast. Um, what's uh, I'm, uh, I'm about to pause me to Twitter. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm curious. What's the what's the uh, oh? It's your podcast. Oh, 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 oh! I didn't know you did a podcast either. What's what's the podcast about? One thing I'm having to uh, remember to do is I do have this camera up here. Typically, when I sand, I sand like real close to me just so I can see it, but it doesn't, can't really see it on the camera there. <laughs> so I'll try to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Another tip, um, I, I was guilty of this when I, when I was doing some wood sanding. Um, is I used to just take whatever size piece of sandpaper they gave me that was in the package and just start sanding with that. Don't do that. Cut your cut it into manageable strips. Um, this is even probably too big. Um, I would maybe cut this in half next time. But cut it into manageable strips so you can get it into little nooks and crannies, not fold up and, and ruin the rest of your sheet of sandpaper. Um, so little things like this. Just kind of cut it. doesn't have to be perfect or exact. Just do something like that. Um, also, I would recommend... Um, you know, build yourself sandpaper tools. Um, so, like, take a—I have a couple up here. Uh, take a take a popsicle stick and wrap your sandpaper around that, so you can get into little nooks and crannies. Um, I also have made a couple of these guys. Um, it's a little toothpick with some sandpaper on the end. Just put some super glue on a toothpick, wrap your sandpaper, and you can get into little holes and do that. Just a just a tip. That's what I would do. You can do what you want. Um, oh, but cool. Sid's podcast is where he interviews people involved in things I find interesting. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, dude, yeah. If you, I'll be on your podcast. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I would talk about, but um, I guess you can pick the topic. I'll, I'd do it. I would one hundred percent come and join you. I think that'd be fun. So as I'm doing this, again, so this is my uh, low grit sandpaper, so it's taking a lot of material away. Um, I might not go too in-depth with this sandpaper because it's really turning out nice. I don't want to take too much of this primer away. I really just want to get it mirror finish with some of these other ones. Um, so I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna go too hard with this two-tone grit. Um, because yeah, it's really, I am already so, so impressed. I am very, very pleased with this. Um, yeah, talk about what I'm doing now. Oh, Arizona? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about whatever you want. So, yeah, I'd love to talk about Arizona. So, um, yeah, I, I won't do it now. Save some content for you later. <laughs> but, yeah, so just, just so you all know on the stream, um, originally from Texas, uh, Love good old Texas, but I decided to move out here to Arizona. Because um, why not live in the wild, wild west, west right? Gunslinging towns. You know, we got Tombstone down the street. Um, it's a good, uh, good time. Plus, the desert has all kinds of cool little critters in it. You know, rattlesnakes. Coyotes. Some of these little nooks and crannies are kind of kind of hard to get to. Um, probably going to have to take a journal to some of these. I really I'm lazy. I don't want to get that out just because it's going to be a mess. And I have to find another plug for it. You know. I will. I will eventually. But right now I'm too lazy. It's Thanksgiving week. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, too many pieces. And honestly, like uh, maybe I'm just using it wrong. But for me, the the locking mechanism on the Dremels aren't always the best. Um, 
Like they work, they're fine, but I I feel like it could be done better. I do love my Dremel. It's really good for a lot of different things, um, especially when you don't have a whole lot of tools. If you had, if I had to have one power tool, ooh, that's actually a tough one. If I had to have one power tool, it would be a toss up between just a drill, like a power drill, and a Dremel, because you can really do quite a lot with not a lot of space with the Dremel. Um, you know, they have router attachments, scanning attachments, cutting attachments. Um, but, again, if I'm doing everything inside, eh, don't always want to get all that out. But, um, could do it outside. It's a little chilly today. Which, uh, chilly to me, I've been ruined by the desert. Chilly to me is like anything below 60. I've been ruined. You can use a drill as a Dremel if you're crafty. Yeah! <laughs> I guess I could do some kind of crazy gearing ratio with it. Maybe uh, duct tape a cutting wheel to the end of it. I'd consider it. I'm crazy enough. I'd do it. So something else I'm noticing here. So this, uh, this primer is really caking up my sandpaper, so I might have to cut some new strips soon. It's not a bad thing. It means it's working. But it's annoying. Stick that popsicle stick in the clamp of the drill. Oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, that would work. <laughs> Or the little, uh, I guess the toothpick in the in the drill. Just chuck a toothpick in there. Yeah, that seems safe. That's looking really, really nice. Um, so I really don't have to get these in part, in, inner parts too much. Um, just because this will be hidden in the assembly. Um, so if you kind of want to preview, it'll look something, something like that. Um, so I don't have to get them too much, and it's already a really good fit. It's actually a really good fit. It's only twisting because of uh, that top part there. Um, yeah, so don't have to get it too hard. I just want to make sure it's sanded down. So if we go do hit it with another coat of primer, um, that there's not too much primer. You don't want to just cake on primer. Um, so really just kind of leveling it back out. It doesn't have to be too much on, on these surfaces here. Um, but let me show you why I'm so happy. Um, so this is a side we haven't hit yet. Um, you can kind of still see like little lines like right there. Um, so I'm done here. And like this side over here. Oh my gosh. You can see where those lines are pronounced because that's where we're sanding them off. Um, but it's, it's so smooth. Here are there's, listen, you hear how there is no ridges. Smooth surface on this side. You can hear the... So we know it's working. That is cool. That makes me happy. Very, very pleased with this. So we know... So I'll be working on this for a while. Um, there's going to be multiple parts to I'm not finishing this today by any means. No, I'm, I've only only really have about another half hour. Um, but I'll be working on this for a long time, so this is going to be an ongoing project. Um, but I'd love to hear any other suggestions for projects. You know, um, any movie props uh, I'll try to do. Um, we talked about doing some sandpaper testing. Um, again, this is kind of just my... I think this is going to be an outlet to... Just kind of do some creative stuff or um, maintenance on other things. Uh, maybe show you how we 3D model um, different parts or how we um, could show you how I set up a, sl a slicing program for 3D printing because um, that's an art in itself too. So if you have any suggestions or ideas of what you'd like to see, I'd love to hear them. I definitely have plenty of 3D printing stuff to keep me busy. Like I said, I still have still have Cooper's stuff over here to to build for him. So <laughs> I 
This is actually the first part I printed for this Mandalorian rifle. Um, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like the kind of like the forward grip area. But it was the first part I printed, so I was experimenting with um, some of the settings, um, you know, getting it right. And not, honestly, this one turned out pretty good for the first print. There is one issue that I'm not really proud of. Um, but it doesn't matter too much, and I decided to keep it because it kind of makes it unique. But um, if you can see here, so this is supposed to be a completely flat surface. Um, but this is actually the surface I printed on. So when I printed it, um, you know, if my hand's the base, I printed it like this. So it was building upwards. Um, and you can see that it didn't have great adhesion to the base. So you have this little bit of a curve here, which again is not a big deal. Um, it will it will cause a little bit of an issue um, when I'm assembling. Um, I just I didn't want to print it again because this one did take a while to print, and I thought it looked pretty good otherwise. But we will have some issues when we're when we're putting this together. And so it goes with this piece here. Um, you can see there's just a little tiny gap there, but um, I felt like that was a good good way to, to try some some fix some fixes um, so I already know what I'm gonna do to fix that I just I kinda wanted to challenge myself and see if I could fix it easily um, so I think that'll be a, a fun fun episode um, showing you how I'm gonna fill that gap um, so that'll be that'll be neat um, <laughs> cool thanks Sid have a have a good dinner it's the uh, the final dinner before um, before Thanksgiving dinner, so eat lightly because tomorrow is a, is a big day. I know I will be later today. I have to prep my turkey. I'm doing a Cajun fried turkey without the fryer because again, I live in an apartment. And I can't fry things, so <laughs> I'm doing a Cajun turkey. Um, it's my dad's recipe, so we'll be we'll be getting that going later today. I'm excited for. Um, for some holiday eatings. All right. So I'm really I'm going to save this surface for last because I'm really excited how that surface is going to come out. Um, that's our problem surface. These big flat surfaces are really easy to get our sanding in. Man, this primer gives a really cool effect. It, like highlights all of our edges there. It looks kind of cool. But, um, maybe we'll do something like that in the paint. You know, this is going to be a metal, metal piece, so maybe we'll do um, you know a metal coat and then do some edge highlighting um, like it's worn. I do intend to weather the crap out of this thing. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so lots of parts go into this. Um, I do have the barrels picked out already. Again, I was telling uh, telling you earlier we don't have the PVC that um, they suggested. There's a couple reasons why I didn't go PVC. Um, one, because I couldn't find the size. I told you that. Two, I felt like PVC wasn't going to be heavy enough. Um, so I go by the old um, Jurassic Park logic. If it's heavy, it means it's expensive. Um, so I wanted this to be really heavy to make it feel real and, and authentic. So I went out and bought some steel bars. Um, Really, really cool. About like 30 pounds, well, not, maybe not 30 pounds, it's like 20 pounds of metal that are going to be just the barrels. Um, they look really cool. So I'll bring those out um, maybe next time. If you do it, I can do like a mock up or something. Um, they, look, they look really, really good. Okay. Hit this top surface. Honestly, I should probably be wearing some kind of mask while doing this because, as you can see, there's 
all kinds of uh, primer bits coming off. Should I be wearing a mask? Yes. Am I? No. I already have asthma. How much worse can it get? Don't be mad at me. I'll make my own decisions. Again, this is that bottom surface we were having trouble with. This isn't going to even out the the curve of the surface, but um, since this was the print plate, it did have some extra texture on it. So I'm curious to see how we're going to get rid of that texture using this this method here. Um, it's like anything else, or everything else I've sanded so far is going to look really, really, really good. Okay. That looks not bad. You can still see where the issues are, but I honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, I honestly think with one more coat of primer, they might all be gone. Um, so you can kind of see here on this edge. Um, this thing really doesn't like to focus, but uh, this edge there's like some layer. You can see some layers in there, kind of where it got messy. I'm hoping to cover that up. I can I can no longer feel it with my finger, which is a pretty good indicator that it's going to be okay under a coat of paint. Um, but I can still see it. Um, so hopefully, get rid of that. I've learned not to tr always trust your just the feel of it because I mean you can still see all of that and it feels smooth, but under a coat of paint, it's not going to look smooth. So. Yeah, it's, again, it's a process. Lots of sanding, lots of coats. Um, but I don't have to have this done in any amount of time, so I want it to look good. If I was doing this for a commissioned build or something, yeah, maybe maybe I would... I'm not going to cut corners on a commissioned build, but you know what I mean. You have to, you have to assess with any project, and it would be... A, you know, a prop build or a um, something you're doing in work. Any project, you have to assess the level of detail um, you need in your solution. Um, so for instance, if I'm painting a wall, I don't want to spend three hours picking out what coat of primer I want for the wall get a primer that the guy at Home Depot recommends and be out of there in five minutes. Just assess the level of, of effort that needs to be put into your project and you'll be happy with the results no matter what. Pro tip. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much. I might take a Dremel to that later and get in this hole, but again, I don't really need to. Um, maybe I will. Um, kind of ruin the paper a little bit, but I have more. Um, just gonna get rid of some of that roughness from the spray. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so. <coughs> wow. You all see that? That's some dusty stuff. Oof. Okay, yeah, I might. <coughs> I'm gonna wear a mask next time, but next time I'm too lazy. Okay, so um, cool. So that was the first coat again. So what we? Oh my gosh! I'm gonna vacuum after this. Um, so again, what we did? Um, we did the 220 grit on our sander or sandable filler, fillable primer, <laughs> um, and it's looking really good. So what I'm going to do next is. Um, Go ahead, hit it with a higher grit. Um, we're going to use our. We're going to go ahead and go to 400. Um, I'm going to go. With, we're going to skip the 320. Uh, 
you know, there is a difference between the 220 and 320, but I think just going up to 400 is going to be just fine. This is already really, really smooth. I'm really enjoying the surface of this right now. Um, oh, Scoofy, I get, uh, uh, I know I need, the <laughs> I know I need the mask. It's COVID time and I'm in my own house. I don't want to wear a mask. Um, but you're right. No, if, don't do as I do, everybody. Use your safety devices. Don't don't inhale. Let's see what the label says. Watch, I'm probably killing myself. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I don't see any warnings yet. Vapors ignite explosively. Oh. Uh, cancer and reproductive harm. Yeah, 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 okay. It doesn't say anything about sanding. Oh, do not breathe. <laughs> there it is. Do not breathe dust, vapors, or spray mist. Oop. Oop. Don't go make me go to mat. Eh. It's okay. we will be fine. Next time. Next time. Bruh, mask up. Y'all gonna make me mask up. I'll be back. I'll be right back. You won't get a mask. <clears throat> Y'all happy now? I'm going to represent uh, some Texas Tech here, just as we're doing this, but not until we start sanding. Okay, so, um, so yeah, like I said, uh, we just did the 220, so we're going to bump up to the 400, and um, like I was saying earlier, this should make it much, much smoother. Again, I've seen guys go up to 1,000 grit, which is going to get you a really, really shiny mirror finish um, eventually. Um, but for me, this is going to be a, a metal, a uh, worn, weathered metal, so I don't need a mirror finish. If I was doing something that was supposed to be replicating like a plastic surface, yeah, maybe I would, but I think I can get away with a, um, with a, a 400, 500 grit, and we're going to be just fine. Um, again, we'll, we'll go, I really want to do that experiment now and test the different sanding methods and the different grit methods um, and see how shiny we can get a surface. Um, 99? Why not 100? I want to live to 100. Um, eh, not today. Alrighty, so let's get going on this. Uh, so let's, we're going to keep using the same part, um, and we're going to finish out this part with, with this 400, and then maybe move to a different one. Um, I'm really curious to see um, how this one turns out. Like I said, this is like the iconic part, right? Um, but it also, because of the way it printed printed straight up and down like that, it wiggled a lot while it was printing, so there are some really defined lines here. So this is the one I'm really excited about and why I didn't start on this one, because I wanted to get the process right first. Um, so we'll get there eventually. Um, so let me go ahead, we're going to hit this with the, I'll see now, I'm in my own home wearing a mask, guys. What I do to live longer, I guess. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. You better be glad I care about you guys. <laughs> if you're not dead by 25, aren't you like 25? <laughs> yeah, so this is working good. Um, like I said, really caking up my sandpaper, so... Um, might have to to switch a couple times here, because um, it's doing its job. I'm glad it's doing its job. That's what I want it to do. But I want to use my sandpaper for more than five seconds, also. But that's asking too much. There has to be challenges in life, or you won't learn anything. Wow! Oh my goodness, guys. Okay, that is that is so nice. Oh my goodness. So. Yeah, so I'm thinking we're, we will have to do another coat of primer. No big deal. I was, I was planning on doing that anyway. I was planning on doing three coats, though, and I'm really thinking that we might be okay 
with just one more. Um, but we shall see. Uh, I, I'm really, I'm really, really looking forward to how this is coming out. Dang, you're right, nunny. <laughs> This is cool. So you can see, again, so the, the point of the primer is to fill in the gaps. So you can see anywhere that the gray is remaining um, is where the primer is filling in. Any of the white stuff that you see is our original plastic. Um, so that's cool. So we know it's working. This high point here, so this really solid white line you see, that was a high point in our plastic print. So all of this gray leading up to it is the is the primer trying to fill that in. It's doing its job, basically. It's doing a very good job. It's doing good. I'm glad we got a couple people watching today. That makes me happy. It's the usual suspects. Hi guys. I think y'all just missed it a little while ago. We're talking about some ideas. Um, yeah, if y'all have any ideas for future projects, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear it. Um, again, I, I have Cooper stuff to do still, um, <laughs> so he'll he'll get those eventually. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'll keep them for myself because they look pretty good. go grab my shop back in the middle of this just because uh, this is really uh, really really dusty really fine dust you can kind of it's a it's a really cool paint too because you can feel those dusty particles before you even start sanding so this is meant for exactly what we're doing it, this isn't just a normal primer um, it particulates um, so that it can do the filling job and can be sanded. Um, this is never a top coat. It's never a final layer. Okay. The issue is, so this is what I was a little worried about with the filler primer, though, is um, it does try to build up to some of our features. So like these rivets here, um, you can see that there's dark gray circles around the rivets because I can't get my sandpaper all the way up to the rivet easily. So the um, basically that filler primer is, is getting right up next to it and, and filling it up. So it's trying to smooth out those rivets. We can address that. We can get in there and sand that primer down. It just isn't the easiest. So is a question as to whether do I want to use the filler primer next or just go with the sandable primer next. Um, the sandable primer won't fill as much as the um, the filler primer does, obviously, but it'll still give us the ability to come back and sand this. So maybe I do that. Um, maybe I hit it with maybe I hit it with just the sandable stuff this next time. Um, more things to try. Um, <laughs> Now I'm thinking. Now I don't know what I want to do. Because <laughs> this isn't bad. This isn't bad. I just don't want to lose the features that we worked so hard to include um, from our 3D print. That would be, be really sad if, if we lost definition. Um, so maybe I'll try that. Try, we're trying We're trying thing, new things here, guys. So... Um, I think it'd be worth a worth a shot. And you can see how white that's getting. We are taking quite a bit off here. But it's really smooth. It's very, very, very smooth. Again, these inner parts don't mean much to me. Um, 
really just want to get all the excess off on the inside because we're going to be assembling it and you won't see it anyway. Um, but again, I do, I do want to get the excess off so we're not messing up any fitment. Um, you know, we don't we don't want fitment issues when we're putting these together. If we have too much paint there, it's going to get in the way of uh, of how these things are supposed to go together. But I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Wow, we are very close to needing another piece. Sandpaper is not too expensive, so I'm not worrying about it, but I, I really do hate using things up, you know. This is my piece of sandpaper. Don't go away. Okay, so we were talking about the difference earlier between the non-sanded and the first sand sanding pass. Now we're going to talk about how the second sanding pass and the first sanding pass are different. I wasn't expecting it to get this much smoother. That is that is like a solid piece. That is really neat. Um, you can still feel some of the bigger bumps, like this one and that one. But overall, it's much, much smoother than our first pass sand. You can kind of hear it too. So... So we'll keep on going with that. Um, I've got a little bit of life in this left. I think I'm going to hit this bottom side first. It's um, got this big section in the middle that should be okay, and it's kind of what it's good for. This bottom side's all flat, so we don't really have to worry too much about uh, getting all the little details. Starting to see my sharpie mark where I marked this earlier. I wanted to label all of these with those part numbers that we looked at earlier, just so I didn't get them confused. And I started putting sharpie marks on here, and I was like, eh, I don't want to write on my parts, so I ended up putting putting tape on the rest of them. But this one has some sharpie marks, and you can see it kind of through. That is so so smooth. I'm going to keep it right there, these corners. 